Story Sketching with Grimm's Tales Hosted by the Dwajak District Library and the Blue Dart Art Group Excerpts from the text of the annotated Brothers Grimm book have been used in this movie to narrate the images. Members of the community gather to create paintings and drawings of the characters from five of the Grimm's tales. The group art project evolved into a video which features everyone's art who participated in the event. The collaboration is a synergy that results in a wonderful video with a great deal of character and shows that the combination of various styles of art can create even more intrigue and beauty than the individual pieces. The artists range in age from 2 years to 99 years, giving an incredible array of techniques and perspectives. We hope that you enjoy watching our rendition of The Seven Ravens, Cinderella, The Shoemaker and the Elves, The Worn Out Dancing Shoes, and Red Riding Hood. The Seven Ravens A man had seven sons. However, he wished for a daughter. Finally, his wife gave him one, and there was great joy. But the child was sickly and small. The father sent one of the boys running quickly to the well to get some water for the baptism. His six brothers ran along with him, but the jug fell into the well. Not one of them dared to go home. When they did not return, the father grew impatient and said, I wish that those boys would all turn into ravens. He had hardly spoken these words when he heard a whirring sound above his head, and looked up, he saw seven coal black ravens. The father could not take back the curse. Meanwhile, his dear little daughter became more beautiful. One day she accidentally overheard people talking. They said that in truth she was to blame for her seven brothers' misfortune. Her parents could no longer keep the secret. This truth ate at the girl's conscience every day. She had neither rest nor peace, so she secretly set forth, hoping to find her brothers and to set them free. She took only a little ring as a remembrance from her parents. She walked on to the end of the world and came to the sun, but it was too hot and terrible. She hurried away and ran to the moon, but it was much too cold. Then she came to the stars, and they were friendly and good, each one sitting on its own little chair. When the morning star rose, it gave her a chicken bone and said, with that chicken bone, you can open the glass mountain, and your brothers are inside. The girl took the bone and went on her way again until she came to the glass mountain. The door was locked, and she took out the chicken bone, put it into the door, and fortunately the door opened. A little dwarf came up to her and said, My child, what are you looking for? I'm looking for my brothers, she replied. The dwarf said, the Lord Ravens are not at home, but if you want to, wait here until they return. Then the dwarf carried in the raven's dinner on seven little plates, and in seven little cups the sister ate a little bit from each plate and took a little sip from each cup. Into the last cup she dropped the ring that she had brought with her. The dwarf said, The Lord Ravens are flying home now. They came, wanted to eat and drink, and looked for their plates and cups. Then one after the other of them said, who has been eating from my plate? Who has been drinking from my cup? It was a human mouth. When the seventh one came to the bottom of his cup, the ring rolled toward him. Looking at it, he saw it was a ring from their father and said, God grant that our sister might be here, then we would be set free. The girl was listening, and when she heard this wish, she came forth. Then the ravens were restored to their human forms again. They hugged and kissed, happily returning home. Cinderella A rich man's wife became sick. She called her only daughter to her bedside and said, I will look down on you from heaven and be near you. Soon the man took himself another wife who had two daughters. They were beautiful with fair faces, but evil and dark hearts. Time soon grew very bad for poor Cinderella. The sisters made fun of her and laughed as they led her into the kitchen. There she had to do hard work from morning until evening. She had to sleep by the hearth in ashes, and because she always looked dusty and dirty, 
they called her Cinderella. One day, the father was going to the fair, and he asked what he should bring back. Cinderella, what do you want? Father, break off for me the first twig that brushes against your hat. On his way home, a hazel twig brushed against him. He broke it off and gave it to Cinderella. She went to her mother's grave and planted it. There it grew and became a beautiful tree. Cinderella went to this tree three times a day. A white bird always came, and whatever she expressed a wish, the bird would throw down to her what she had wished for. Now it happened that the king proclaimed a festival. All the beautiful young girls in the land were invited so, so that, that the prince could select a bride for himself. The two stepsisters were in high spirits when they heard that they had been invited. They called Cinderella saying, We are going to the festival at the king's castle. Cinderella wept because she too would have liked to go to the dance with them. She begged her stepmother to allow her to go. You, Cinderella, all covered in dust and dirt, you have neither clothes nor shoes. We would be ashamed of you. The next day, Cinderella went to the hazel tree and said, Shake and quiver, little tree, throw gold and silver down to me. Then the bird threw down the most magnificent dress. When Cinderella appeared at the festival in this dress, everyone was astonished at her beauty. The prince then immediately took her by the hand and danced only with her. He said, she is my dance partner. When evening came, she ran away from him so quickly that he could not follow her. However, when she ran down the stairs, her left slipper fell off. The prince picked it up. It was so small and dainty and of pure gold. He said, No one shall be my wife except for the one whose foot fits this golden shoe. When he came to their house, the older sister took the shoe to try on. She could not get her big toe into it. The prince then told the other sister to try the shoe on. She got her toes into the shoe all right, but her heel was too large. Don't you have another daughter? No, said the man. There is only a deformed little Cinderella from my first wife. The prince told him to send her to him. She washed her hands and face clean and bowed down before the prince, who gave her the golden shoe. She pulled her foot out of the heavy wooden shoe and put it into the slipper, and it fitted her perfectly. When she stood up, the prince looked into her face, and he recognized the beautiful girl. He cried out, She is my true bride. The stepmother and two sisters were horrified and turned pale with anger. The prince, however, took Cinderella onto his horse and rode away with her. The Shoemaker and the Elves A shoemaker had become so poor that he had only leather enough for a single pair of shoes. He cut them out one evening, then went to bed, intending to finish them the next morning. The next morning, he found the shoes on his workbench completely finished. Amazed, he picked up the shoes in order to examine them more closely. They were so well made, not a single stitch was out of place, just as if they were intended as a masterpiece. A customer soon came by and paid more than the usual price for them. The shoemaker now had enough money to buy leather for two pairs of shoes. That evening, he cut them out, intending to continue his work the next morning with good cheer. But he did not need to do so, because when he got up, they were already finished. Customers soon bought them, paying him enough that he now could buy leather for four pairs of shoes. Early the next morning, he found the four pairs finished. And so it continued. Whatever he cut out in the evening was always finished the following morning. He now had a respectable income, and with time became a wealthy man. One evening, he said to his wife, why don't we stay up tonight and see who is giving us a helping hand? His wife agreed and lit a candle. Then they hid themselves behind some clothes that were hanging in the corner of the room. At midnight, two cute little men appeared. Sitting down at the workbench, they picked up the cutout pieces and worked so unbelievably quickly and nimbly that the amazed shoemaker could not take his eyes from them. They did not stop until they had finished everything. They placed the completed shoes on the workbench, then quickly ran away. The next morning, the wife said, the little men have made us wealthy. We must show them our thanks. They are running around with not much on, freezing. I want to sew some clothes, and you should make a pair of shoes for each of them. The husband said, I agree. And that evening, when everything was finished, they set the presents out and set up the unfinished work. 
Then they hid themselves in order to see what the little men would do. At midnight, they came skipping up, intending to start work immediately. When they saw the little clothes, instead of the cut-out leather, they at first seemed puzzled, but then delighted. They quickly put them on, then stroking the beautiful clothes, they sang. Then they hopped and danced about, jumping over chairs and benches. Finally, they danced out of the house. They never returned, but the shoemaker prospered, succeeding in everything that he did. Worn out dancing shoes. Once upon a time, there was a king who had 12 daughters, each one beautiful. They slept in one room where their beds stood next to each other. At night, the king closed the door and barred it. However, when he opened it the next morning, he saw that their shoes had been danced to pieces. No one could determine how it happened. Then the king proclaimed that whoever could discover where they went dancing each night could choose one of them for his wife and become king. However, anyone who attempted this and failed would forfeit their life. Many came to try this risky venture, but they all lost. Now it happened that a poor soldier met an old woman who asked him where he was going. He said, I would like to discover where the princesses are dancing their shoes to pieces and then become king. That is not so difficult, said the old woman. Do not drink the wine that they will bring you in the evening. Then she gave him a cloak and said, when you put this on, you will become invisible, and you can follow the twelve. Having received this good advice, the soldier took heart and went to the king and announced himself as a suitor. He was given royal clothes to wear. That evening, at bedtime, he was escorted to the anteroom. The princess brought him a goblet of wine. However, he had tied a sponge beneath his chin and let the wine run into it drinking not a single drop himself. He lay down, and after a little while he began to snore, as if he were in the deepest sleep. The princesses got up, took out their best clothes, and made themselves beautiful. Then the oldest one went to her bed and knocked on it. Immediately it sank beneath the floor, and they all climbed down through the opening. The soldier saw everything, and without hesitation he put on the cloak and followed after. They continued until they came to a magnificent walkway between rows of trees. Their leaves were all made of silver and they shone and glistened. Soldier broke off a twig. Then he came to a walkway where the trees were all made of gold and finally to a third one where they were made of clear diamonds. He broke a twig from each of these. They continued on until they came to a large body of water. Twelve boats were there and in each boat there sat a handsome prince waiting for them. Each prince took a princess into his boat. On the other side of the water there was a beautiful illuminated castle. Joyful music sounded forth. They rode over and went inside. Each prince danced with his princess. The invisible soldier danced along as well. He took along a goblet as a piece of evidence. They danced until three o'clock in the morning then headed for home. The soldier ran ahead and got into bed, and when the twelve tired princesses came in, he was again snoring loudly. We are safe from him, they said. Then they placed their worn out shoes under their beds. The hour came when the soldier was to give his answer to the king, and he brought the three twigs and the goblet. The king asked, where did my daughters dance their shoes to pieces? And the soldier answered, in an underground castle with twelve princesses. Then he told the whole story and brought forth the pieces of evidence. The king summoned his daughters and asked them if the soldiers had told the truth, and they had to admit everything. Then the king asked him which one he wanted for a wife. The soldier answered, I myself am no longer young. Give me the oldest one. Their wedding was held the same day, and the kingdom was promised to him following the king's death. Little Red Riding Hood Once upon a time, there was a sweet little girl. Her grandmother gave her a red cape. She came to be known as Little Red Riding Hood. One day, her mother said to her, Come, Red Riding Hood, here is a cake and a bottle of wine. Take them to your grandmother. She is sick and weak, and they will do her well. Behave yourself on the way, and do not leave the path. 
A wolf came up to her. She did not know what a wicked animal he was and was not afraid of him. Good day to you, little Red Riding Hood, said the wolf. Where are you going so early? To grandmother's. And what are you carrying under your apron? I'm taking her some cake and wine. Just where does your grandmother live? Her house is under the three large oak trees, said Little Red Riding Hood. The wolf thought to himself, he must be sly and you can catch both of them. He said, see the beautiful flowers? Why don't you go and take a look? She thought, if I take a fresh bouquet of grandmother, she will be very pleased and ran off the path looking for the flowers, going further and further into the woods. But the wolf ran to the grandmother's house, pressed the latch and the door opened. He stepped inside, went straight to the grandmother's bed and ate her up. Then he put on her clothes and cap and got into her bed. Little Red Riding Hood arrived at her grandmother's house. She called out, Good morning, but received no answer. Then she went to the bed and pulled back the curtains. Grandmother was lying there with her cap pulled down over her face and looking very strange. Oh, Grandmother, what big ears you have! All the better to hear you with! Oh, Grandmother, what big eyes you have! All the better to see you with! Oh, Grandmother, what a horribly big mouth you have! All the better to eat you with! The wolf jumped from the bed and ate up poor little Red Riding Hood. Then the wolf climbed back into bed, fell asleep, and began to snore very loudly. A huntsman was just passing by. He thought, the old woman is snoring so loudly, I'd better see if something is wrong. When he approached the bed, he saw the wolf lying there. So here I find you, he said. I've been hunting you a long time. He cut open the wolf's belly and the girl jumped out. Then the grandmother came out as well. The three of them were happy. The grandmother ate the cake and drank the wine that Little Red Riding Hood had brought, who thought, as long as I live, I will never leave the path and run off into the woods by myself if mother tells me not to.